Thank you, Bill, for this kind uh, uh, words and this kind introduction. And it really uh, is an emotion for me to give uh, the lecture with uh, for uh, Leslie Blumgart. And here we share many, many times some meetings. And I was was I had a great admiration for this man. It's always an, uh, it's also an emotion for me to be here because. Uh, since I left uh, uh, the practice of uh, liver surgery and transplantation, I measure how much uh, you make progress. And uh, I think that was really uh, fantastic to be a surgeon now. So as you know, as I told you, it was told, I was involved for 30 years in liver surgery and liver transplantation and then I finished in the in institution and where uh, we try to define the innovation. Innovation in surgery, two important things is to decrease the risk and to extend the possibility of resection. But they are divided in two categories. First, uh, progressive or incremental. And this is typically what we do every day is that surgeons do is that with the repetition of acts, with the improvement of the procedure, then we become more precise, faster, less aggressive, with more efficient. On the opposite, uh, there are some uh, innovations who are disruptive because uh, they answer to unmet need or they induce radical change in your practice. So with uh, 30 years of uh, experience, I will try to see what we can uh, learn and what we can uh, about what we know about liver surgery. We should never forget that uh, the liver is uh, very friable, full of vessel, evidently incapable of being sutured. That was said by uh, John Elliott. And at this period, the report was 60%. So it's not a surprise that uh, we see a lot of innovation trying to improve the section and the management of parenchymal transection. However, if we look on this all technical innovation, in fact, there were no very significant, important, significant progress because it was uh, related especially to the expertise. And we just expect, I think, the, the true innovation, the radical innovation where will be when we can prevent biliary leak. On the opposite, the vascular control in order to, pre to, to pre protect from bleeding, I think was uh, a disruptive innovation. And this disruptive innovation was the first clamping of the portal, of the portal by James Pringle. However, it takes 70 years to be accepted. And there were some reluctance due to the fear of splanning congestion. If you look on the story, it was incredible how there were many discussions. The overestimation of the injury induced of the ischemia, but also the overestimation of many surgeons who saw that with their dexterity, they don't need any clamping they have no bleeding. In the 1980s, then, there were a development of clamping. At this period, we realized that clamping was better than bleeding. And there were several controlled studies uh, comparing pedicular, total vascular occlusion, hemiapatic clamping. And then if we look on the, the result of the study, what we can see first, there is a disappearance of the routine total vascular occlusion. Maybe only a few exceptional total vascular exclusion with cooling. There is an extension of the preconditioning and the predominance now of intermittent clamping. First, because it's a simple procedure, and second, because it increases the tolerance of ischemia reperfusion in disease parenchyma. And this is, I think, one of the most important change, is that we perform less resection in patients with normal parenchyma. First, 
there is quite, and it will be, the disappearance of the resection for benign lesions. And I think that this is one of the most important progress for many patients. The second is that the vast majority of resection are performed in patients with diseased liver parenchyma, it was for HCC, but also cholangiocarcinoma and metastasis due to any change in some of them induced by chemotherapy. So there is now, we see that there was a need of preoperative assessment of the liver parenchyma. And there were several innovations, but probably with limited progress. We still need a stress test for patients with normal liver function. And we have only the induction in green plasma. So there is a, a great field for, for this. There is now many uh, progress, innovation on the impact of the, of, of the radiology. MRI can be now nearly histological analysis. Or more recently, a CT, CT scan where they can, when studying the surface modality, then they can say that this liver, apparently, with normal function, is probably not normal. <coughs> Concerning the parenchyma, I think that there is a way of the, the open the door for potential disruptive innovation. One way is, is here is the regression of fibrosis with antiviral therapy. So it prevents uh, HCC occurrence and recurrence after liver resection and transplantation in some way. It prevents the recurrence of hepatitis B and C after liver transplantation. And one of the most fascinating uh, uh, innovations that we have seen with this, we, 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 is the, with the treatment of steatosis or the NASH, we can have a regression of some tumors, and that was some cases now, but there are many cases now, where this shows that uh, the weight loss because, could become a future treatment of hepatocellular adenoma in some obese patient, as illustrated of this slide, when you see from a BMI of 47 to 31, you have a dramatic decrease of the size of the adenoma, and this patient was not operated. So let's come back to the history of liver resection. The first successful uh, hepatectomy was performed in 18, eight, uh, 1880, 1880 by Karl Langensbusch. Uh, it was a pedicular lesion with a successful resection without significant bleeding, but the, the urgent reoperation. I think that the second important surgeon was Ton Tan Tung in 1938. It was a Vietnamese surgeon, and why it was so important? Because he was the first who had an excellent knowledge of the liver anatomy. He published segmentectomy using finger fractures without any vascular control. And maybe one of the most important things, it was the first to say that I want to be an exclusive liver surgeon. That was the, the first uh, that was in board. So in 1945, there were about 200, more than 200 cases of liver resection, mainly left liver resection. And it seems in 1948 that the major resection was impossible. However, in, 1940, in, in 1949 and in 1950, Injo in, in, in Japan and Lorta Jacob in Paris, in the department when I was, uh, they, they, they performed the first right hepatectomy. Both had the same approach, that means large approach, including the thoracotomy, a complete mobilization of the liver, control the inflow and the outflow pedicles, and use the crash clamping. It was a successful. This was a disruptive innovation because they had an excellent knowledge of the liver anatomy, but there is Two important points. First, the concept that leaving sufficient anatomical territory with adequate inflow and outflow can allow, it can allow expecting an efficient regeneration with normal function. That was the first. And the second, how you can imagine, 
is that Dvor Tashakov in the discussion said that maybe this partial lever with anatomical autonomy could be used as a graft. And he said that therapeutic approach for some hepatic disease once the problem of tolerance of tissue graft and their rejection has been solved. So that means that 40 years uh, before the first uh, liver, transplant, uh, liver transplant with a partial graft, the, uh, the, the uh, Lorta Jacob anticipated the use of the right liver as a, as a graft. Why? because there were, at this moment, there were an important innovation. It was Quino who described, and what was his innovation? He shows that the right and left lob are not the right and left levers. And then there is a subdivision in eight segments. The innovation, the technical innovation on liver imaging always resulted in progress. There is no doubt. When the ultrasonography appears, the CT scan, the intraoperative ultrasonography, and MRI was always improving. I think that one of the most important progress and uh, innovation was the 3D liver uh, anatomy. First, because it gives an immediate vision of the tumor relationship with structures. It, gave, it allowed the preoperative planification of the approach and strategy, and always remember, no, no inno, uh, the, the, it is important to prepare to discuss before. Probably it will change, and it will lead us to reconsider the Quino anatomy, but this is for the next years, and uh, it is a fantastic progress when we want to use a partial graph in liver transplantation. I would just Speak a little bit on liver transplantation. You know everything on liver transplantation, 1963, Starzl, then very difficult period. And in 1985, an, an expansion. This expansion was said to be due to immunosuppression and reception selection. However, has the chance to live in France and in France, at this period, there were also technical innovation because Fra Henri Bismuth, here you can see here Henri Bismuth with Tonton Tung and myself when I was resident. At this period, he picked a junction between liver transplantation and liver surgery. So many technical innovations that came from uh, Europe, uh, the reducers graph by the U.S. side, the split, the preservation of the caval flow, and this in order to use the partial graft. And then, I think I, it was one of my big chance, and it was a fantastic uh, for me, is that the living donor liver transplantation was a revolution. It was an interim and disruptive innovation. Why? First, because it was an answer to unmet need. It allowed many countries with cadaver, without cadaveric donors to perform liver transplantation. And so it, it was also a factor of progress, better knowledge of the anatomy of the biliary vascularization, but how you can imagine a better knowledge of the anatomy of the hepatic veins. And then you under, we understand many things. We understand the importance of the outflow on liver regeneration. And at the same time, we, uh, we, we, uh, we understand that we were looking not to accept any complication or in, in the donor. And the unacceptability of complication in the donor was very important for the whole, uh, for whole, whole patient operated for liver surgery. One of the most important innovators was uh, Makuchi, was with Professor Makuchi. Uh, I think that first is the use of ultrasonography intraoperative to guide the, 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 the surgery to, to uh, always using intraoperative ultrasonography. The second is that uh, Makuchi, who, who described the first modulation of the liver, preoperative modulation of the liver volume by postal, portal obstruction. Oh, some course, and you can see that's associated with biliary drainage, associated with chemotherapy, then you can extend the liver resection. 
It is impossible not to speak to Hobbes on this view. And Hobbes is an innovation. It was an innovation, I think, because it could give an answer uh, for, uh, for unmet meat in some patient. And especially when we tried many years ago, it was in patient with biliary cancer requiring pancreatic and liver resection. So these two steps was very interesting. It could be inter it was interesting in some below bar uh, patient with, with colorectal liver metastasis, and the concept of the association of two process of regeneration was very important. However, I don't think that it's a progress. I don't think because uh, there is now so much restriction of the candidates that now you could have a juice who could get a benefit from those procedures, and. What I think very important is that there is no need of superiority to accept an innovation. However, there is still inferiority for this uh, procedure concerning the risk, the hospital stay duration, the cost, and that sort of And what is uh, difficult to, to, to understand is that it's a complexification of a surgical procedure in a period where we aim to limit the hospital stay and uh, that's probably why it's not adopted by the majority of HPB uh, units. I have to speak about uh, Leslie Blumgard. I know, will not forget. Leslie Blumgard uh, and innovation. He was an important worldwide leader. You cannot Im you can imagine how this man was important for the whole world. And here you can see many surgeons coming from Makuchi, from uh, Nimura, coming from Nahos, Peter Nahos, Miyazaki, coming from all parts of the world. Uh, he refused dogma. He was resistant to some uh, uh, other surgeon. He promoted evidence-based uh, medicine. And at this period, he pushed liver resection from primary and secondary malignant liver tumors. Because at this period, there were no, no many surgeons believe that with surgery you can treat, you can have a survival benefit in patient with malignant disease. When we look on the oncological liver resection, uh, there were some fantastic innovation, very important innovation with significant progress. There is no doubt. The oncology, the definition of oncological territories, that's what everybody knows for Heiler cholangiocarcinoma for hepatocellular carcinoma and the transplantation for malignant tumor. You cannot imagine for a uh, transplant uh, nephrologist uh, from a kidney transplant to say that in when we transplant the liver, we can transplant the liver of, with a malignant disease. This was a really uh, fantastic innovation and a, a, a fantastic progress. There were also other innovation but probably with progress to lesser extent. We don't know very well. And some of the, our, uh, some that we participate in just innovation, the anterior approach, the liver hanging, the lymph node dissection, and the peritoneum patch. I think it's, a, it's, it's innovation. We don't know if it's really a progress in survival or the patients. It's, not, it's impossible to, not to speak about the mini-invasive liver resection. Fantastic, major technical innovation, a revolution, and a progress. And a progress for many patients, uh, of course, because they improve the tolerance of surgical procedure with less pain, less pulmonary complication, better quality of life. And one of the questions, is it an answer to unmeet need I think it's probably yes for facilitating procedure in obese patient, and yes for the, uh, allowing the resection of HCC in seriatic patient who do not, who, do, who are not operable through laparotomy. It's also a progress for surgeons. First is improved vision, less fatigue for the robot, and probably one of the most progress, one of the most important thing is that it will accelerate the standardization of the procedures. That with some technology, probably you will not go, what you will not, you will have less liberty to do what you want. And I, I, that will be important. 
The question, are there still que important questions about the learning curve, the simulation, and the oncologic equivalence? But you know uh, uh, all of this. Just to show you that 50 years after uh, the first step in the moon, I was very impressed by uh, an innovation, Safi Dokmark in Beaujon, he performed a laparoscopic liver transplantation, the first step of a laparoscopic explant hepatectomy was published in Annal of Surgery. Also, it is important innovation. I don't know if it's a progress, and I share with him, we don't know, we don't know that. There is no always difference. So, in the conclusion of this historical uh, uh, lecture, it's important uh, to, to understand, to, it's important to know what happens, to understand the present, and aiming to anticipate what we, what we become. Uh, one of the important things was the lowering of the risk of surgery, because we should not, we never should not forget that morbidity decrease the survival in malignant, in patients with malignant tumors. The second, I think, this important uh, way to lowering the, the risk of surgery is to avoid unnecessary liver resection. Then in liver, liver lesion, and in many malignant uh, lesions, for example, metastases of the breast, melanoma, cholangiocarcinoma with satellite nodules. Probably we will see more extensive use of percutaneous ablation, there is a lot of progress on the, in this, a uh, lot of innovation with, pro with robotic guidance. And one of the most important innovations would be the use of artificial intelligence based on huge data, including genetics that we had set to predict efficacy and complication. Concerning the extent of the possibility to operate, I think minimally invasive surgery should be always think is as an answer to unmet needs. This is not only a comfort, it should be think. And what we see here and what we, uh, we, are, we, we was, uh, was impressed is that liver transplantation can be used now from therapeutic impasse in some malignant Thank you for your attention.